Oh, dear participants, um, let us start the next um, session. Um, I'm glad to open the session. Uh, it, it is called Mechanics and Entrepreneurship. Uh, and um, it's my great pleasure because this is uh, another confirmation that mechanics can be uh, very diverse and interdisciplinary, not uh, only among different branches of sciences, <clears throat> but also um, among different branches of life uh, as well um, as business. And um, I would like to introduce uh, our first speaker, Alexander Lizakharov um, from uh, St. Petersburg Russian Federation. Um, and he is going to tell us about um, uh, his uh, company, Photo Mechanics. So, uh, Alexander, please, you're very welcome. Uh, thank you. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, I will tell about uh, business that I run with uh, my brother, uh, Sergey. Uh, our company is, uh, is called Photomechanics. Uh, and uh, we position ourselves as a manufacturing technology company. Uh, so who we are? Uh, we... Uh, 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 we uh, we design and uh, produce uh, automation tools for different uh, industrial, logistics, and retail applications. And uh, currently, we have uh, three uh, three business areas. Uh, one is uh, warehouse automation. Uh, another is uh, 3D and uh, 360 photo automation. And uh, also we. We are producing uh, small educational CNC machines. Uh, uh, actually, on these pictures, you see uh, uh, three three different uh, areas, uh, three uh, our three different products. Uh, we don't see a presentation. I'm sorry. Yes, uh, can you please share your screen? Uh, I think we, I think we I'm sharing. I think I'm sharing my screen. Just a second. Do you see it now? Yes, now now okay. we see it. Thank you. Okay, sorry. Uh, so here three uh, here are three pictures that presents us in three different areas. You see kids with small CNC machine, and you see photographer that is making photo, and uh, on on top you see uh, the automated warehouse with uh, automated sorter. Uh, as I said, we are running this business together with my brother. Uh, a few words about us. We, we both uh, graduated from uh, Polytechnical University, St. Petersburg. Uh, and now uh, we're working in photomechanics. My brother is uh, CEO, I'm CTO. Uh, and uh, also I'm working in another US company called GoTRG uh, as a r and manager. Uh, uh, I will skip this slide. Uh, I will tell about our history and uh, our projects. Uh, here you can see our first product. Uh, and uh, this is why we are call, uh, we called uh, Photo Mechanics, because we started with uh, uh, producing turntables for automating uh, 360 photo. Uh, you know, uh, currently on different websites, you you can see that you can rotate uh, object, rotate product to to see it in details. And uh, this kind of photos uh, are made uh, using some automated tools. Uh, and this is one of them, uh, a table that is uh, run by special uh, software that is synchronized with a camera. And uh, uh, after you've done all, all the settings, you click button and the uh, object starts to rotate and camera makes a, a set of uh, pictures. And then you uh, you can see on the screen uh, this uh, interactive, interactive, uh, um, interactive photo. So we... Uh, this is our first product, and we 
uh, still producing uh, these tables. Uh, and uh, so we started from that and now, uh, sorry, yeah. Now, uh, currently we are running uh, some big, big, much bigger projects. Uh, we are doing uh, warehouse automation projects. Uh, here, here our last projects. Uh, we automated the warehouse in U USA for American uh, for American customer, and we also did uh, uh, many more than more than twenty automated uh, facilities in in Russia for uh, world known companies like FM Logistics. Five post, post retail, Katren, uh, coffee, uh, Jardine, uh, coffee producer, and uh, we also working this year with Phoenix, MTS. Uh, MTS is a cell phone uh, 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 cell phone company, and Monastero Pharma. Pack, Pack, you know, is Russian Russian uh, uh, shipping company, and Novex. Novex is also from aseptical company so we, we are working with all these big companies uh, automating facilities for them uh, here here you can see the typical typical automated solution for small uh, satellite facility and uh, on this picture you can see the one of bi uh, bigger projects it's uh, some e-commerce hub automation uh, this is project for uh, MTS. Uh, like th this is this is just details of that project. This is one level uh, with uh, all these conveyors. Uh, I will I will tell a little bit more later about uh, about about this automation. Uh, now I just want to uh, show you the like overview of our projects. Uh, this is uh, uh, this is automation warehouse for uh, five uh, for X, X, X five. Uh, they have e-commerce department and uh, they have e-commerce hubs for, for that we automate. Uh, this is uh, automation warehouse for FM logistic. Uh, FM logistic is a world known uh, logistic company from France. Uh, this is uh, also pictures of FM Logistic Automated Warehouse. Uh, just a second. Uh, yeah. Uh, I will tell a little bit about our history. Uh, So we started in uh, 2011. Uh, we started. Uh, we, we lived with my brother together uh, that time. We at our house we made a prototype of this uh, 3D photo machine because my brother was a photog was photographer that time, and uh, he wanted to. Uh, to try this uh, 360 photo and uh, uh, the equipment was very expensive and uh, we decided to build it ourselves uh, and uh, but it was it, it appeared to be harder than we thought but we did it and after after finishing that equipment we decided that we can sell it because uh, that time there were not uh, the type of equipment in Russia, so we we thought that uh, we can sell it, and uh, we started selling it. Uh, so after after making first prototype, we also did uh, a website, and we immediately sold uh, our first machine uh, to one of uh, uh, one of uh, photographers. And then we registered our company uh, in April uh, 2011, and uh, that time we worked in uh, uh, in Polytech in small uh, workroom uh, that uh, that we got from uh, 
from theoretical mechanics department and uh, we uh, we started building that uh, machines we uh, bought uh, very cheap equipment uh, it was band saw a hand press and a small metal bending machine that uh, three devices and uh, we we made the uh, first 10 uh, turntables ourselves with my brother and th this is exactly how they looked at that time actually they look same uh, right uh, right today uh, and uh, then we started selling them uh, we uh, we made this uh, black cabinet for for this machine and ordered it uh, to from third party company they produced the cabinet for us and uh we i also uh my, my education is uh, uh it in it i'm a programmer and uh, i wrote uh, some software for that table and integrated it with a computer and with a camera we had pentax camera uh that time and uh, this uh, table consists of uh, a step motor and a driver for step motor. Uh, also, it it had belt with uh, two pulleys and uh, software and camera, everything that it had. Also, this uh, desk uh, above the above the table. Uh, and, and we launched our website and we sold 10 first devices and then we uh, actually uh, started growing we uh, uh, hired our first employees uh, we and in in 2012 we uh, we launched fab lab together with uh, polytechnical university we uh, we was granted by government to to create a uh some kind of this uh fab lab space and uh polytechnical university also was interested in running fab lab so we actually polytech ran fab lab and we helped a little bit with uh, this uh grant from government and equipment uh that uh we bought from from that grant and actually uh fab lab helped us also with uh equipment uh with space uh with uh people that worked there uh you, you can see on these pictures this uh, this, this is equipment that we had in fab lab this is fab lab space it's how it how it looked at that time uh the our next step in our history was uh uh 2014 uh we ran new project called df kit we also received grant from uh from government uh it was grant for creation uh, of educational equipment and uh, we spent one year in the r d research uh, made prototype of this uh, cnc machines that you see on, on these pictures it's uh educational cnc machines that uh uh, very very safety and very easy to run uh and uh very nice looking and we sell them into schools uh and other fab labs uh some these educational laboratories uh and we continued our growth uh, uh in 2015 we we left fab lab space and we started uh, renting small uh, area where we created uh, small manufacturing uh, you can see it on the picture uh, it, uh, it was assembling manufacturing of our devices uh, at that time it was this uh, turntables and uh, and these cnc machines of course we also uh, increased the uh, line of our products uh, we it was not only that uh, one turntable it was many other devices uh, like big turntables small uh, lighting devices uh, arms for that uh, that uh, can take camera up and down uh, we also hired more engineers and uh, we hired uh, also few 
programmers. So we had now engineering department and software department. Uh, they were still very small, like uh, three engineers and two two software developers, but still. Uh, uh, and we also uh, that time we started uh, to build some internal processes in the, in our company and uh, standards. And we started to run quality control for our production because we had many reclamations uh, from our clients. So we we worked on quality. And uh, that was a very important step, step in our company when we uh, when we had our own space for manufacturing and we uh, changed our processes. Then uh, in 2016, uh, uh, we, uh, we, we got new uh, US client, GoTRG company. Uh, GoTRG is a, it's a quite big company that uh, uh, it's major reverse logistics uh, operator in the United States. Reverse logistics means that they work with uh, customer returns. Uh, they work with products that are uh, being returned from uh, from re uh, retail stores, from Walmart store, from Amazon, and uh, all, all these products that were returned by customers, they go to uh, GoTRG facilities. And GoTRG sponsored, uh, uh, sponsored uh, R&D in warehouse automation because at that time GoTRG planned to automate all, all, all uh, their warehouses. And uh, they were mostly interested in uh, sorting, sorting line, uh, sorting conveyor, because uh, they had a huge uh, number of uh, uh, SKUs on their facilities and they, uh, they need to sort these products uh, into different directions, different locations according uh, according to different criteria. And uh, they were very interested in their proprietary solution. And they sponsored R&D. Uh, and we started R&D and, and uh, we actually created prototype of uh, first uh, sorter in, in Russia. We, we showed them, uh, made them presentation how it works. And uh, they said, "Okay, now we want a full size proto a full size uh, machine in in our facility." And it was a really huge, huge conveyor. You can see on on picture. Uh, it it uh, I don't know. It's I think it's more than hundred meters long because it's only part of it. Then it turns uh, to the left and it has another side. It has a uh, uh, sixty seven sorting locations products run to this uh, run on this belt and uh, when when it need to be sorted uh, it had diverting arms that uh, are open it uh, with uh, pneumo pneumatic cylinders and uh, then it takes a product to uh, to sorting uh, sorting uh, location and uh, it falls into a big box uh, and uh, they also sponsored. Uh, uh, they also sponsored different uh, research in area of self-driving forklifts and small warehouse robots. Uh, here you can see. I, I will show you a video. This is forklift prototype self-driving on on the facility that we created, uh, but it did not go to production because uh, it. it it, it th there are many many other things that uh, required to be done to run it to production, especially safety, uh, all the safety uh, checks, safety protocols, and uh, also uh, there is a big task to make this uh, machine uh, running together with another automated machines. And uh, actually, they. They stopped. Uh, they stopped all this R and D uh, in 2018 because they were not interested anymore. And and uh, the goals of GoTRG company changed. Uh, so only only sorting on the sorting machine uh, uh, from that R and D was assembled in a real facility and worked uh, with real products. 
uh, but uh, after after we after we stopped working with uh, GoTRG, uh, it's actually was another big step in our in our history uh, because we we started uh, uh, we started massive growth on market of warehouse automation right after that we we got first uh, big client uh, FM logistic uh, uh, it was a very small project uh, you can see on uh, on on the picture uh, it's uh, automated uh, it, it's it's picking picking stations uh, you, you see gravity racks here and the people people are working in uh, in this uh, zone and uh, people working in that zone zone uh, and uh, they pick in products put it on the conveyor then products run on conveyor and uh, uh, they are sorted to different uh, location according to to their transportation directions and uh, actually this uh, this small uh, small conveyor helps uh, to increase productivity uh, of picking products uh, two times and also it decreases uh, rate of errors and it decreases uh, cost of uh, operational costs uh, and uh, FM logistics was very uh, was very happy after we installed this uh, conveyor of course of course they they are familiar with uh, that type of solutions because in europe they have uh, uh, they have after, uh, automation level of facilities uh, that are, are not presented in russia at all so it's like a spaceship but in russia they they had mostly manual process and they decided not to use Euro european uh, European technologies because it's very expensive um, for Russia, and they decided to find local uh, local producer, and they found us, and uh, they they uh, they made this small project with us, and after that they they were happy, and they uh, we we still working with them, and we I think we've closed uh, more than five projects already together, uh, and uh, actually. From from that project, we started uh, massive growth on automation market, and uh, I think our uh, our our last step, uh, not the last, but our 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 uh, our next step in uh, our history was uh, uh, this year. Uh, we expand expand in our manufacturing. Uh, we 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 got uh, we are, again we granted by government. Uh, this grant allows us to renew and expand our manufacturing. And we actually uh, we rent another another uh, another place outside of uh, the city. Uh, it's uh, one hundred uh, square meters, and we uh start running metal metal work in production it gives us uh, f uh new opportunities because we have now time advantage and price advantage we we can deliver our products much faster because uh before we order it uh, this metal working from third party companies and it took us uh, from two to three weeks to get the parts for assembling and now we can produce it within one day so it's it's a, a huge uh, huge increase in time and also it's much cheaper not much but cheaper and uh, we we can uh, we can give a better price to our clients and this is our advantage as well uh, so now let's talk about uh, our advantages uh, and why why I think our company is successful so we uh, st starting from from uh, 2011 
uh, starting from 2011, we we used combination of uh, mechanical engineering and software, and we tried to do it on a very high quality level. Uh, uh, so if you look on our first product, uh, rotation tables, I would say it's uh, one of the best rotational tables in, in the class. Uh, so it, it can compete with uh, world world known companies in uh, in that uh, that are famous in that area like photo robot uh, and others and uh, it had it had also one uh, of the best in class uh, software for uh, for 360 photo uh, this this is all software but uh, please remember it was 2011 and at that time it was very 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 good software and uh, 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 very innovative it had a lot of features and uh, uh, our our uh, product could compete with uh, with other com competitors uh, another our product uh, this mechanical pneumatic diverting arm sorting uh, i would say that its quality of its assembling is comparable to also to world leading companies uh, uh, and uh, we also have i think it's one of the best software for controlling these sorters uh, it's uh, uh, our con conveyor control system I would say a few words later about it, but uh, it's it's very it's very good software and very very high quality software. Uh, our mechanical multi belt sorter also uh, very high quality sorter, and uh, actually it can compete with uh, production of such famous companies like Schaefer, uh, Interol. If you know, uh, these companies are uh, monsters of warehouse automation. Uh, we also uh, had had some innovative solution uh, solutions in software. For example, we have unique uh, barcode scan system for ultra small barcodes that we made for Gautier G company. And uh, nobody in the world can scan uh, uh, that range and that that small type of barcodes because we we asked uh different uh, vendors like zeek uh, data logic etc and they all say that their products cannot scan uh that type of barcodes and we we made solution uh, using high resolution cameras and software also we have uh, some uh, ai based checker of uh, orders like you see on uh, you see screenshot on picture below it checks uh, that order is uh, filled uh, correctly and you see it shows errors uh, so I, I think our, our one of our inventions is this compilation of uh, mechanical engineering software why I'm saying it's on high level because uh, I know that currently a lot of mechanical mechanical uh, products has some software uh, some some software that is built in and can control something but usually it's on very 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 uh, very small level like some small software but uh, our our software that we produce for that for our mechanical tools it's a uh, uh, very sophisticated in, in that area and th that gives us a, a competitive advantage for example our control uh, conveyor control system is uh, much more smarter and much more uh, user friendly than control systems of uh, of world leading companies in that area and that gives us uh, big opportunities uh, another of another advantage, I would say, it's a combination of price and quality. Uh, I, I made a com comparison between Chinese Chinese products, uh, our company, and European products. 
uh, actually China and Europe are leading leading uh, their le uh, leaders in this industry of warehouse automation. Uh, China plays uh, uh, in area of low and medium quality. Uh, we, uh, there are a few problems with Chinese uh, solutions. Uh, there is high risk of fraud when you order something from China. They can just take money from you and uh, not not deliver anything. Uh, they have extra low level of support. Uh, uh, it, it just doesn't work their support. We tried. <laughs> Uh, they have a la uh, uh, language barrier because uh, it's it's they they speak English very bad. Uh, uh, usually, in, uh, representatives of Chinese automation companies they speak English very bad, and this and they play also in uh, in low medium price segment. If you take Europe, it's a best quality that ever exists. Uh, there is no any risk. Uh, all companies are world known. Uh, they will deliver what they say. Uh, they have support, but it's uh, very, very expensive. And if, if you need to change something in European conveyor system, you need to pay huge money. Uh, their service is much better than Chinese, but still because they are uh, they are far from Russia, uh, sometimes it's not uh, not such such quick as our service, and they have a very high price. Yeah. Uh, wh why why I'm saying photomechanics here, not not Russian uh, companies, because uh, photomechanica photomechanics is uh, I think is only one producer of warehouse automation uh, solutions in Russia. Uh, uh, we have. Uh, we, we we would say our quality of our products is medium quality. We have, we have many completed projects, so we are uh, experts in this area. They know they already know our company. Uh, we have very professional support service, and uh, we have it's this service is very fast. We have IT support and mechanical support, and we have mechanical engineers that uh, can arrive to fa any facility within uh, one two hours if something goes wrong. Uh, we also use uh, trying to use simple technologies, uh, and uh, that's why they're very cheap. So our we, we produce tilt tray sorter and it's super cheap comparing to competitors our diverting hand sorter is also super cheap and we also for example use uh, weight checker and instead of buying uh, expensive uh, uh, sensors uh, for uh, for measuring weight we used the ai algorithm that allows us to measure weight using cheap sensors so our weight checker is same uh, same uh, same quality but much cheaper than competitor than from our competitors so our advantage is this combination of we we're trying to use uh, we, we're trying to keep our quality of our products on on some level but we're still trying to make it as cheaper as possible uh, advantage our our next advantage of our company is uh, small innovations that we use uh, why, why I'm saying small uh, because um, uh, we we don't produce uh, something that consists only only uh, from innovations we we, we don't uh, we don't uh, Construct bicycle <laughs> from from scratch. We we used uh, we used known uh, already checked uh, solutions like uh, for example turntable for photo. Uh, it, it it was created uh, uh, I think 30 years ago, and uh, sorting conveyors were created also 40 years ago. We we don't invent some new uh, new sorting, uh, new sorting 
systems, we use very classical approach, converse. Uh, there are a lot of companies that are trying to invent something new, like uh, robots that are going with products through all the facility instead of conveyor. We, we don't do this. We, we use classical approach, but we use innovations in some small areas, like, uh, for example, our conveyor control system that uh, controls the conveyor. It tracks uh, every product position. And this is uh, this is what what other companies cannot do, but we can. We track uh, every product on every place of uh, conveyor, and we also patented our sorting system because it has advanced control and it has advanced uh, error tracking. If something goes wrong, if product falls from conveyor to uh, floor or something like that, we we know this, and we. Uh, update all this information uh, in uh, in software, and uh, we we track the level of errors. We track number of errors uh, in in time period, and we have alerting that uh, alerts you if something something if if you have uh, some significantly increase of errors. And also, I mentioned this. Uh, uh, weight checker that use AI algorithm to check weight. And we, we try to use some smart advanced algorithm in some tasks that where where it's needed. Uh, for example, we I, I showed you checker for picking of the products. Uh, we, we use advanced algorithm in barcode reading. Uh, not always, sometimes, because usually, uh, usually uh, we just use standard barcode scanner from world known uh, world known uh, brands but uh, in some in some uh, in some applications we use our proprietary barcode reading algorithm uh, so all, all the small innovation uh, helps us to keep a competitive advantage and kind of compete with with our competitors uh, Another another advantage it's Russian market. Uh, some uh, somebody would say that the Russian market is very uh, unpredictable, very small, etc. But it has advantages. It grows. Uh, uh, it grows very significantly, uh, and uh, we don't have any sorting conveyor manufacturers in in Russia except for the mechanics. So we compete here right now only with Chinese and European companies and uh, some Russian companies that sell Chinese and European uh, products. Uh, European systems, as I said, are too expensive. Chinese systems are too unpredictable. Uh, so I, I would not say they are their Chinese system, but I, I would say that you don't you usually don't know what you are buying because there are uh, tens of Chinese companies in this market, and some of them produce good products, some of them uh, produce something uh, low quality level, and uh, with this language barrier, and uh, uh, mm, they're located very far from us, you, you never know what, what you're buying. And also in Russia, government gives some money for, for expanding uh, like I said, this year we received uh, uh, we received money for expanding our uh, our manufacturing. Um, okay, and actually, that's it. Uh, like. I, I would say a few more words about our products because I have uh, I have some time. Uh, like describe in details how it works. I I I I, I told you in details about 360 photo. Here's actually uh, what we have uh, at current stage uh, because uh, as I said we're still producing this 360 automation. Uh, and, uh, this is our last, not not last, but very, 
our very new product, uh, this uh, machine with a rotational platform and uh, lighting control. You can control lights on the top, on, on, on left and right side from software. And uh, actually our new software for 3D photo, it uh, looks modern, has more new features. Uh, we have well, cloud portal where you can store your all your photos that you make from from software. It's uh, you can immediately load them uh, without any click. It just automatically loads to to cloud portal if you uh, if you check this checkbox that uh, use cloud portal. Uh, and from cloud portal, you can embed it into your website in in very easily in just a few clicks so this is a uh, current state of uh, these projects here here are our uh, cnc machines that i mentioned it's actually four machines it's a uh, cnc mailing machine uh, and uh, laser cat 3d printer and uh, 3d scanner uh, very safety machines all, all uh, everything is closed with uh, this uh, covers and uh, very nice looking uh, actually it's uh, it's my it, it's ex more expensive than for example chinese 3d printer but it's uh, uh buying our products you get in four machines in same design in same uh in same format and also uh, why uh, educational organizations uh, buy our uh, products because together with CNC machines we give them uh, we give them mat materials for for lectures for lectures and uh, their teachers can study uh, can teach uh, kids with these materials a uh, few more words about this automation uh, converse how it works actually i i will take this example uh, the task is to uh to ship e-commerce uh e-commerce uh e-commerce orders uh, there is a facility the, where products are stored and then when when order comes from e-commerce uh, they need to pick pick products from shelf pack pack them and ship to customer or to uh, to this uh, uh, shipping picking point uh, this kind of facilities they uh, they operate with uh, tens of thousands of uh, orders every day uh, and uh, that's why it cannot be done manually uh, here here you can see one one floor of this automated warehouse it has regular shelf racks and also gravitational racks uh when they when they fulfill these racks with products they fulfill regular products on regular racks and they fulfill high high re, high uh re, high return products that uh has very really, have very really high rate to gravitational racks and uh facility employees they stay on this line uh, between regular racks and gravitational racks and uh, they see on on their screens uh, what what product need to be picked and from which shelf they go they go and pick and those they also can pick from gravitational racks that are very uh, fast operation and they put they just put, scan and put products to conveyor. So uh, products from f all four floors they they come to first floor uh, using conveyors that uh, that are across across all facility and uh, then they come to packing zone uh, here 
here people stay and just pack these products into boxes. Uh, there is also a weight check if, if uh, something with order is wrong and it didn't pass check, it goes to some error area where uh, some special special guy will process this error, error order. After packing, they go to, uh, it's not shown here, they, they go to this uh, uh, packing machines that uh, that put this film uh, on top of the box, and they uh, then uh, products are boxes scanned one more time and is uh, sorted to one of uh, sorting locations according to uh, shipping direction. So from uh, they are sorted. They take it on pallets, and uh, after pallet is complete, they take pallet and uh, load it on a truck. And uh, so, first truck is uh, completed here on first location. Second truck is on second location, etc. And this, uh, for example, this small small solution. Just a second. This this small. It's similar to that, but just very small. So you can see these gravitational racks, regular racks, people standing uh, beside the conveyor, then conveyor, then sorter. So actually same same process. Uh, here only difference that people that pick product, they pack it right away and put already packaged to the conveyor. Also, the, another, another type of solutions is where there are no facility, there are no stored products, there are no warehouse, it's just a cross dock. When, when you receive products from different directions and then you need to come uh, mix them into different other directions and send them to uh, different locations. Uh, here you don't have any picking, people just uh, use, uh, people throw products on the line, then and other people uh, scan it and put it to sorting line, sorting conveyor. Then sorting conveyor uh, uh, pushes product to one of uh, these sorting locations, and then products are being shipped to to final destination. So this is how it works. So we speak about uh, we spoke about our history, our advantages, our products. Uh, this is all I uh, I can say about our company. Uh, thank you for okay. your attention. Please ask questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Zakhara, for very interesting uh, presentation. Uh, again, as I said, it's a wonderful example how interdisciplinary um, and diverse mechanics can be. And also, if uh, uh, somebody remembers famous quote, of Richard Feynman about physics. So this is an example of how mechanics can bring us practical results. So thank you very much. Uh, please, um, we have some questions from the audience. Uh, please, Professor Anton Kripto. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, Alexander, thank you very much. Uh, very, very interesting experience, very interesting uh, presentation and really remarkable results. Uh, my question is, uh, can you comment when, uh, uh, when were the first commercial results? Uh, if we, uh, if you remember from the very beginning, uh, was it uh, when you were students or how many years after you graduated? So uh, can you just uh, a bit comment this uh, time scale regarding your, the time of your graduation from university. So I, I have graduated in uh, uh, 2006 uh, and uh, my brother have graduated uh, in 2011. Uh, so he, uh, when when we had this first commercial result in 2011, my my brother just graduated, and uh, I worked for a software developer 
for five years in in some Canadian company, uh, just as a developer. And uh, as I said, we 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 started to build this product just for fun and uh, just uh, because my brother wanted to try some new in uh, in in photo, some some new type of photo. And uh, equipment was very expensive for us. We we could buy it, but we we decided not to spend uh, this big money and build it ourselves. And uh, it actually we we thought we we can build it within two weeks, but it actually took three months. <laughs> uh, but uh, after getting that experience, we realized that we can that we can sell it. I think this correlates very well with the phrase which we have in our co-working, a phrase from Nobel Prize winning economics, which states actually that the main, uh, uh, one of the main drivers which lead to commercial success is cur cur curiosity. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Kristoff. Uh, now, uh, Ms. Kristina Plochova. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Alexander. Uh, so, uh, could you tell uh, what uh, qualities uh, should uh, a person have uh, to succeed in business uh, in the European? Or it's uh, maybe a myth and everyone can succeed? I think to succeed in business, uh, you need you need to take risks, mm, because uh, even when when we when we produce this for first uh, prototype, then we need to uh, then we need to buy uh, then we had to buy some equipment. Uh, now now we now I can say it was very cheap equipment, but that time it, uh, for us it was very significant money and uh like it was my monthly salary for example uh or maybe two monthly salaries that i had to put for that equipment and uh I, it it wasn't very very easy to to get to uh, to give that money for an equipment because uh actually we again it was it was it was for fun and then uh, then it, it turned that uh, you need to you need to give, give some money that you don't know if you if you ever going to take it back or not. And then that time it was um, money that uh, current day I I wouldn't even think about uh, about uh, about it and I would give that money immediately. That time it was very uh, very significant decision and every time during uh, during our company uh, growing we we had to make that type of decisions but uh, um, uh, money was bigger and bigger and bigger and actually uh, currently we i can say that we operate with uh, with money that uh, uh, we, we take risk f uh, and we we our uh, size of our contracts are much more than uh, money that we have. So we, for example, we we sign contracts for half of billion of uh, half of billion of uh, rubles, and we don't have that money. I cannot I cannot put half of billion on a table, but but we take this risk. And we signed that contract, and uh, actually, we we, we uh, deliver that uh, contract. But it's a risk, and uh, without without risking, you cannot uh, you cannot run business because uh, you you will never you will never uh, be able to to get something. I think this is main thing, and, and another another it's just. Uh, I don't know combination of uh, situations of your education of uh, your thinking 
just that's it. Okay, uh, thank you. Thank you very much. I think it's uh, so very useful for us that you um, share your business experience. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I have a question. Uh, uh, as you know, uh, there is uh, um, a famous uh, belief that uh, uh, education and business is not needed. So people uh, mm, uh, uh, provide examples of Steve Jobs or other people who did not graduate and they say that, uh, well, look, education is not needed to uh, to run business. Um, so what is your opinion? Uh, did your education help you or is it really so that it was useless? So, so I, I would say that uh, in, in my case, it definitely helped. Uh, I would say that it, it depends on every business, every person is uh, unique. Uh, so for some, somebody can run business without education in some areas, I don't know, somebody can self-educate. Uh, in our in our case, uh, we we have like it's it, it's combination of my education and my brother's education. He is mechanical engineer, and I'm a, a software engineer. And uh, like I said, uh, we this is one of our competitor advantages that we have uh, very high quality software and we have high quality mechanical uh, mechanical piece. And uh, of course, uh, building this high quality software, uh, my education helped me build in building that high quality software because I know how, how it should be done and I know what is high quality and uh, I know how, how to make support of software. But uh, okay, if you take Steve Jobs, of course, uh, Apple go makes also high quality software and he, 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 he did it without education. So education for me it help it helps for somebody can do it without education i don't know okay thank you very much and we have uh time for a very short question from german zavratnik please uh alex uh you've mentioned uh, that you've got some money from government what kind of grants uh, do you mean and the main question this money was enough for what so we you referring to last our last grant i think this manufacturing expansion uh this this was 20 million rubles uh we it was enough for buying a uh, cutting machine for cutting uh, of for metal cutting laser cutting machine uh also uh, cnc uh uh, how it calls feeding machine that that can this one CNC press for metal and also uh, another CNC machine uh, so uh, okay thank you I see you 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 <coughs> you bought some devices for your manufacturing and that's that's enough okay I see Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I would say let us thank the speaker, uh, Alexander. Uh, thank you very much again for your very interesting presentation. Um, and I would like to introduce the next speaker, uh, Nikita Gusika, uh, Russian Federation, St. Petersburg. Um, and he is going to tell us about system smart locker and modern design thinking methods. So, uh, Mr. Gusika, please, you are very uh, welcome. Good afternoon. Do you hear me? Yes, yes we hear you, uh, but do not see your screen yet. Um, one moment. And don't see you also. And, and don't see me. Um, one moment. I have a trouble with my web camera. So, do you see me? Yeah. Yes, now we see you, your presentation, and we can hear you very well. So please, you can begin. Okay. 
Okay, one moment. Uh, so, good afternoon, colleagues. Uh, my name is Nikita Gusik, and uh, I am the commercial director and uh, founder of uh, company Venia. Uh, and now I would like to give a talk about how we, uh, what we do when we start and how we start uh, works. So when we first opened, we uh, doing uh, smart homes and smart offices, uh, but it was uh, not interesting for us uh, because uh, there is a Mm, such problem you know uh, i think that uh, in uh, life and in business is only two ways to uh, to send your products uh, it's a low cost and difference different uh, different tension uh, different tensions uh, so low cost is uh, when you do something that is uh, already done um uh, but uh, cheaper than your analogs. Um, and uh, it is a, uh, maybe it's a comfortable way, but it's not interesting. So we made um, smart home and smart offices uh, of the way of low cost. Um, as I know, uh, in Russia, and uh, I think in uh, uh, all countries, uh, there is a rule that uh, your smart home costs like your home where you uh, integration it. Uh, so we make it uh, more cheaper. We make it about uh, 30 or 40 uh, hundred thousand of rubles. So it's uh, very much cheaper, but not interesting. And uh, when we um, do some small money, uh, we start to uh, find new problem, find new, uh, choose new uh, partners. And uh, I go to different conferences, speak with people, uh, ask uh, ask them for their problem, and uh, in one conference we met a company of Philip Morris, and they said that uh, they have had a big problem with the process of uh, saving and uh, problem of processing of uh, turnover of materials assist in the company. And so we think uh, we st started to solve this problem for them. Uh, so we make a, a system that named Smart Locker, uh, and uh, it's help uh, to save money on process of uh, storing, recording, and issuing uh, equipment um, uh, by pro by making this process optimization and uh, optimization. So Smart Locker is a um, uh, you can see a renders uh, in uh, the slide. It's a poster match with uh, three types of cells for large, medium, and small site uh, equipment. Uh, each cell uh, is equipped with uh, presence sensors, uh, uh, lodgements, and uh, disinfection system. Uh, so the way of using it's uh, very, uh, very easy. Um, People, uh, people go to the poster mats, uh, uh, put down his uh, card, key uh, card, and uh, choose what uh, equipment they need. Then uh, poster mats uh, for the, his, itself opened uh, uh, needed uh, cells with needed uh, equipment, and uh, people take it and go away to work. Uh, so, uh, but. Um, now I would like to uh, let's uh, take a, a closer uh, the current situation. Uh, so uh, before the system, uh, the problem, the situation uh, uh, looks like uh, that. Uh, if you need a laptop, you go to your line manager, write uh, some phrases why you need it. Uh, your line manager uh, read it, uh, and after that, send it to IT department where they read it, uh, your writing, uh, writing of your line manager, and send uh, a message to you uh, what time you you can go and take your laptop. Uh, you go to another building uh, because uh, there is a, a lot of building in Philip Morris. You go to another building, um, wait when IT department uh, gives you a laptop because they have another uh, 
and other things to do. Uh, and uh, when they give you laptop, uh, laptop you go away to work. But um, it's um, about 25 minutes to uh, an hour, as I know, uh, this, uh, this, process, uh, this process time. Uh, and it is not the biggest problem. The biggest problem is that uh, the uh, Philip Morris uh, uh, factory works three shifts. But the department of uh, IT, IT department where laptops uh, are issued is uh, works only two shifts. That's why if you work at night, you can't take a laptop anyway. And it is a really big problem. Uh, there is a solution to uh, to take another man who can uh, work so only to give uh, to only to solve this problem, but it is not an economically good idea because it's a cost uh, for one year about our system. But uh, also, it's an understanding that uh, that men can do. In, uh, disinfection analytics uh, they need uh, holidays and so on so uh, now i will speak about uh, what we make uh, after that so uh, about two years ago we made the first version uh, it works but um, they don't uh, this don't uh, this prototype don't have uh, any uh, different function like disinfection, equipment protection. Uh, so there is a one, uh, one idea uh, that all our concurrents, uh, equipment projects make uh, like uh, people choose uh, in screen what equipment they need, he need. And after that, this system remember what he choose. And things that uh, he take this one, but if in the in in a cell there is something another, or two laptops or three laptops, or something different, uh, the system don't uh, understand if he take uh, not only that uh, he uh, choose in the screen. Uh, we make another algorithm. We remember what uh, he choose, and after that uh, we rem we understand it, what he take uh, really. And if it is a different things, uh, our system uh, sent message to administration. That is uh, some problem because people, uh, men take uh, not uh, the equipment that uh, he said he need to uh, to take. Uh, also, there is uh, another problem. Uh, so, uh, for example, you have a, you take a laptop, and uh, when you go back to put down your laptop that you take, uh, you put down another laptop. Uh, your personal, that is uh, more not so good or, and so on. And uh, it was a problem, but uh, we solved it. Uh, we making um, special lodgements. Uh, uh, that lodgements is uh, uh, the similar for, uh, forms uh, that uh, equipment uh, that putting in it. Um, and it is a uh, too good. Uh, it was very good idea because uh, first it's uh, solves this problem, uh, solves this problem. But secondly, it is a um, passive. Um, it's uh, economically very, uh, very good for us because uh, when uh, some company buy this system, smart locker, after that, if uh, they change the the equipment, they need to take uh, another. Uh, lodgements uh, of us so we every month say uh, sold this equipment can solve this equipment no and uh, this is a situation like in indiana jones when uh, some someone uh, put down uh, some no, not equipment but uh, i don't know stones uh, to the lodgement uh, there is a web camera uh, web camera that uh, uh, understanding that something uh, going uh, not normal and send also message to um, administration. So uh, also uh, because uh, nowadays it's a very actually uh, problem, we make a system of uh, disinfection 
for all cells uh, because the process of uh, issuing equipments is uh, one of the most dangerous from the um, point of view of epidemiological in a factory. Uh, because if uh, there's someone from the uh, IT department who always uh, 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 take and uh, give laptop or something and other tools uh, if, if uh, he's uh, ill, uh, it's a very big risk for all factory. Uh, therefore, this infection system can be uh, built into our cells uh, with uh, contributes uh, to a significant uh, reduction in the risk of infection. Uh, so, uh, there you can see our works, uh, uh, our works of Philip Morris company and uh, some other company, uh, renders and uh, photos. Uh, so, the renders is a, was a, some new way, uh, because we start make renders, we education how to do it uh, uh, make it beautiful but uh, and uh, for our clients who buy the system uh, but after some times we understand that uh, the company that can and uh, needed to buy the, our system it's uh, uh, not not so much to send uh, every month one system but uh, you, uh, we understand the all company that we speak uh, like our renders and we start uh, another way of our company we start sending renders so we make renders of the product to website to a different company now we works with a, a company that sells wells uh, well uh, and uh, after it we uh wanted to go to the jewelry in, in uh, market uh so that uh, it was very surprised for us that uh, we, we don't um, plan it this way of uh, growing our company but it uh, it happened <laughs> so uh now i would like to to speak about some uh as, as for me, uh, some uh, pl pluses of uh, our system. First of all, it's a personalization, uh, full customization of smart locker, including the ability to have a, a dictionary func uh, functionalism as well is a individual design, starting from uh, postmats and up to the management interface. Uh, also, it's control. I speak about control in the previous slides. Uh, flexibility. We work with uh, any system of cards and uh, security passes and uh, read, uh, ready to connect uh, and adapt uh, our software to any program. No process of optimization in a factory. And uh, also, the, we now make some, uh, as I think, good idea. We made that uh, the, our system. It's uh, m now it's models. Like in, in a, uh, if you have a situation that you need to to to, to keep uh, five, uh, for example, for example, five laptops, uh, and after, and you buy the system for five laptops. Uh, after that, if you need to uh, keep another two. So seven, uh, you don't need to buy any, another system for five. You can keep uh, buy only two cells and uh, the processing of uh, integration, the new cells for old, uh, is uh, very, very uh, easy. So you also don't need a special man who do it. We, we don't need to go to the factory and uh, do it for our clients. Uh, you only, it's a, uh, happened like in uh, Lego or in, uh, not in Ikea, but, but for example, yes, it's a uh, close to Lego. So uh, now I uh, speak, uh, I told her all that I want to talk about my business. After that, I uh, wanted to talk about design thinking. It's a methodics uh, that help us to um, 
find this problem and uh, find our first client. Uh, so, and now I think I will uh, I will be happy to answer uh, any, to any question about our business. Uh, so. Uh, okay. Nikita, I think you can proceed, uh, and then uh, then we will ask you the questions when you okay, finish. Okay. 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 So now I would like to tell uh, you about design thinking methodics. Uh, I choose uh, this topic because uh, I think it is uh, important in a business and uh, in uh, ordinary life, everyday life. Uh, we all always speak to different people to have a to get the information what we need but uh, conversation with the people uh, can be compared to an archaeological excavation um, you need to be care careful uh, because uh, if you ask something like do you like my idea or do you think uh, this uh, is a good idea this question is a uh, as for me the dynamite and bulldozers that uh, destroy all of your interview with the man and uh, you you will hear only wrong information but uh, it's it's not the biggest problem that is wrong uh the biggest problem is the um, if you hear it's uh, always optimistically uh, too optimistically. Uh, if you hear, uh, of course we buy it, uh, it is um, very bad uh, because 19% uh, it's uh, not true, but you think that is an idea, your idea is good, someone to uh, want to buy it and you open a new business. Uh, it's uh, uh, and it's very uh, very bad. So now I uh, uh, would like to give a talk about how to uh, how to choose the right tool to the to the discuss. Uh, there is um, three main uh, approaches uh, to making your dialogue effectively. Firstly, you need to talk about people, uh, not about your idea. Uh, secondly, ask uh, only about specific uh, thing, uh, things that happened, uh, that was happened. Uh, not about, oh, one moment. Oh, oh. Uh, and not about uh, views and opinion on the future. Uh, the third is a rule uh, that I named uh, 8020 a rule. Uh, you need your respondent to speak 80% of the interview time and you only 12 uh, so, I think about the first is uh, more clear, because if uh, your opponents speak uh, not so much in an interview, you, your interview not uh, the most effective. Uh, the most effective. Uh, that's why you need to make uh, something like uh, this rule or in, when you start an interview. Um, uh, uh, so, uh, but to make to make more clear the first two rules, uh, I wanted to uh, give a classical example of the failed conversation. Uh, so, uh, son asked uh, his mother, "Son, listen, mama, I have an idea for a new business. Can I discuss it with you?" Uh, it's uh, mom. Uh, yes, dear, of course. Son, do you like uh, your iPad and uh, do you use it uh, often? Mom, yes. Uh, son, would you like, uh, would you buy an app for your iPad, like a cookbook? Uh, mom says something like, hmm, I don't know. Uh, son, it will co only cost $14. Is it cheaper than a uh, hardcover books. Uh, mom say, well, I don't know. Son say, you can shape re re receipts with your friends and uh, use the iPhone and uh, uh, iPhone app to make shopping list. And uh, there will be videos of the chief uh, you love uh, so much. Uh, mom say, yes, son, it's uh, sounds 
tempting. You are right. Fourteen dollars is a good price. And uh, where I will be illustrate, and uh, there will be illustration for the reservoir there. Uh, son, yes, of course. Thank you, mom. You are the best. Uh, and something uh, like this. And uh, I think you understand that this is dialogue is a no, doesn't effective, but uh, very um, uh, very destroy to the son because he uh, thinks that uh, he uh, talk to the poten potential clients. And the client said that, uh, yes, it's a good idea. Uh, we will buy it. But uh, when uh, no one buy uh, this apps from the sun, he, he will be very su surprised. So uh, uh, now I will try to fix uh, the dialogue a little uh, to make uh, it more effective uh, and uh, make um, the questions that Sam uh, asked him, uh, her mother, uh, more uh, not so optimistic for Sam because uh, all last dialogue uh, sound like uh, Sam need to, uh, Sam wanted to hear his himself uh, opinion, not opinion of uh, his uh, potential clients. So uh, let's try to fix. Uh, Sam, hi, mom. How is your communication with the new iPad going? Mom, I literally feel in love with him. I use it every day. Sam, and uh, what do you usually do with it? Uh, mom, nothing like that. I read the news, play Sudoku, uh, communicate with my friends. Uh, and something like this. Son, what did you use uh, it for the last time? And it is a very good question because uh, we started to talk uh, about, uh, after this question, we started to talk about uh, real facts, uh, not about opinion, not about uh, uh, opinion to views to, on the future. Uh, the question like uh, usually, always, uh, sometimes, uh, this uh, it's a um, it's a good question, but uh, the answers uh, uh, usually uh, doesn't keep any information for you. Uh, that's why the question like uh, when you use it uh, last time, when this problem uh, was uh, happened last time, it's a very good question. So. Uh, what, did you, what did you use it for the last time? Mom, as uh, you know, my dad is uh, applying to go on a trip and I was uh, looking for the possibility uh, accommodation option. Uh, son, did you use uh, any application for this? Uh, and uh, this question can be called uh, leading. Uh, but uh, sometimes a slight push uh, is uh, needed to turn the conversation into the direction of uh, interest to us. Son, I see, by the way, uh, I saw a couple of uh, new cookbooks on the shelf. Where did they come? Where, where, did, where did they come from? Uh, Mom, an ordinary Christmas present. That's uh, all. That's all. I think uh, Mercy gave uh, this uh, one to me. I didn't uh, even open it, uh, as uh, as if I need another lasagna recipe of at my age. So and um, there is uh, when we hear this answer, there is two, uh, three. Uh, find three grains of gold. Uh, the first is uh, older people uh, don't need uh, another re regular collections of recipes. It's about uh, lasagna. Uh, the second is that the gifts marked uh, appears to be stable. And the third uh, is uh, that uh, perhaps you young chiefs uh, a more promising segment uh, 
since uh, they are not eat, uh, familiar with the basic of cooking. Uh, so uh, you can see that uh, if we make a good question, not wrong question, uh, the interview started, the dialogue started more effective. And we had the information uh, that we need, but uh, not the information that uh, people told us uh, before. Uh, so after that, you can uh, make uh, another question about what was the last uh, cookbook you bought for yourself. Uh, and uh, maybe the answer will be like, it's, uh, I, I, bought, I remember that I bought three months ago, I bought a collection of the recipes of, for vegans. Uh, and after that, you can think that uh, even uh, expressed uh, chefs uh, may be interested in the specializes or original cookbooks. Uh, and you can continue the conversation uh, uh, and uh, find new and new ways to make your business more effective. Uh, because um, you now you share a good idea, idea that uh, is really it's really uh, not uh, opinion and not views of uh, people. Uh, so uh, to uh, to clear uh, clarify the meaning of the first two points uh, a little more, it's a uh, worth understanding thing. Uh, this all people lie and uh, all people uh, uh, hallucinations. Um, when I sp when I say it, I mean uh, that uh, people lie in not so good words. Uh, they say that you want to hear. They they uh, uh, they say that uh, they think you want to hear, but not truth. Uh, it's happened because it's uh, regularly your friend, uh, uh, some someone that uh, who wanted to save your feelings and something like this. That's why very important uh, talk not about you, but about themselves. Uh, also, it's a good idea because uh, people uh, usually want to want to talk about themselves, but not for uh, talk about uh, some some someone other. And uh, all people hallucinations. It's um, things like uh, they can strongly believe that they say true for you. That is a uh, uh, for example, I uh, when I speak with uh, potential clients, uh, I usually think that it's uh, phrases like uh, "yes, this is a very big problem for us. We uh, uh, see it usually in our factory. Uh, it's happened usually. Uh, it it is terrible. Of course, uh, if it uh, some solution of this problem, we buy it. But uh, after that." Uh, it's maybe yes, it's maybe true, but maybe it's um, it's a hallucination of uh, the man of my respondents. And I asked him uh, when uh, the situation happened uh, last time, uh, for, for last time. Uh, and uh, after that, I can uh, understand really, usually always often it's uh, not facts. Uh, in fact, if it's happened uh, yesterday or one year ago, um, it's uh, make your uh, understanding the situation more clear. Um, and uh, after you understand uh, when last time it's happened, uh, you need to ask something like, uh, uh, do you, uh, do you, find uh, another solve, uh, ways of solving this problem, what happened when you don't solve this problem. Uh, and uh, also it's a very good, good question. Uh, what happened if you, you not solve this problem? And usually after this question, uh, people say, hmm, I don't, um, I don't Google it. I don't uh, uh, choose the way of solving this problem and really uh yes it's a problem but uh the uh, 
ending uh, it's uh, not so terrible uh, we uh, it's happened so usual that uh, we uh, it's a part of our life today and uh, this means only one uh, not so important that they say that is a big problem for them uh, when you start your business or to solve this problem if they uh, re before don't buy something to solve it you they don't buy uh, your solved also and uh, that's why very important to uh, ask the question only about facts only about uh, not about future not about uh, the point of view of people uh, so uh, there's a golden rules another if your respondent uh, didn't try to find a solution or to a problem uh, on his own uh, then he will not pay any pay, then he will not pay any attention to the solution you pr proposed uh, and also after this there is a free types of uh, that we need to be protection uh, uh, protection uh, from the uh, introduction into the delas in information uh, three types is a complement uh, chatter general phrases key particular reasons uh, talk about the future and ideas uh, so uh, now let's speak about uh, dungeon complements uh, opinions uh, unless uh, provided by an not an industrial uh, experts with the ex experiences uh, uh, building a similar product uh, are worth versus you want uh, facts not compliments the most uh, disturbing phrases that you can hear in the office is that everything went well everyone liked the uh, idea uh, compliments are even worse uh, than uh, empty cri critics uh they can not only not give you the information you need but uh, also uh fails uh, resource you uh so going to the second point uh, about chatter there are three common forms of chatter uh which statements i usually i always i never uh, we talk about it. Uh, I talked about it uh, before. Uh, promises uh, of to for the future. I think uh, I will do it. I will do this. Uh, here particular reasons. I can. I could. Uh, if someone start talk about things that uh, they usually always sometimes or would do, uh, you should know uh, that this is just. Uh, ideal at all. Uh, the worst uh, example of such a uh, chat is the uh, phrases, I will definitely buy this. Uh, if you uh, interclot uh, starts uh, such a dialogue, try to translate uh, it to specifically. Ask him when uh, the situation, as I said, uh, happened the, the previous time. Uh, there is a some good question to stop uh, theater and starting uh, effective dialogue. Uh, for example, ha have you ever done this uh, or that? Here, here is a list of, uh, 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 will you ever do this and that? What do you usually do? Uh, don't you think that, uh, could you, can you imagine that is a, bad uh, question that starting uh, chatter uh, but uh, really this question are not so bad um, just answer to this question will be useless uh, the mistake is not to in fact that you asked this question uh, but uh, it uh, the mistake is it how you uh, evaluate the answer to them uh, and the third uh, 
uh, bad things is the ideas. Uh, now people don't suffer from uh, uh, that uh, they don't have another uh, so, so much ideas, but from this, uh, uh, but they suffer that ideas too many. Uh, often when you talk uh, with a potential user, he tries to take your place and begin to advise how to improve the solution. Uh, they say that you need this function, this function, and this function, but it's the uh, it's not right because the solution it's uh, uh, your problem, uh, and understanding this, the problem it's a problem of your client. Uh, when you s hear that uh, you need to make this function uh, function, um, don't uh, try to make it, uh, don't try to make it uh, very quickly. Uh, first of all, you need to understand why uh, he need it and does he really need it. Um, for example, you can ask a question like, uh, uh, why do you need it? Uh, what actions can you perform with it? How do you cope with, uh, without him? Do you think we should add this, add this future immediately or it can be done later? Uh, this question is very well because um, usually people answer that mm, don't, you don't need to make it immediately, but it will be good if you do it later. And that means that really then they don't need this function. Uh, this function is uh, not reasons to buy. For him, for them. Uh, so, if you uh, if you start your business, you don't have a resource, you don't have a very big, uh, ver, ver, a lot of time, and you can uh, make only the main function of your product, not the uh, another ideas. Firstly, uh, that's why the question: Do you think uh, we should uh, add this in? future immediately or it can be done later it's a very good question uh, how it fits into your current job uh, and so on ideas uh, and future requests uh, should be analyzed uh, not uh, building immediately so I think that's uh, all I wanted to say about uh, my business and uh, design thinking methodics uh, and I will be happy to answer to any questions. So Mr. Gusika, uh, thank you very, very much for a very interesting lecture. I I'm afraid to say uh, after seeing slide 15 that everything went very well, <laughs> but this <laughs> It is an honest opinion. Uh, so yes, thank you very much uh, for the lecture about your experience and business. And also uh, it was very interesting to see some uh, theoretical uh, ideas about how to work with clients. Um, now, please, uh, we have time for questions and discussions. Um, um, are there any questions from the audience? So, okay, then I will start. Uh, um, so can you please tell, uh, uh, um, as uh, the last uh, lecture, Alexander Zaharov mentioned, he worked with uh, uh, international colleagues, with uh, Chinese colleagues, for example. Um, when uh, applying this uh, methodology of working with clients, did you have any international experience? Do you think there will be some uh, uh, peculiar peculiarities uh, on working with international colleagues. Uh, so what do you think? Uh, thank you. Uh, yes, of course, uh, there is a more biggest idea that uh, uh, I think that uh, the most uh, quality of uh, my potential clients, it's uh, international clients. Uh, we, we worked with a Philip Morris company that uh, have a uh, uh, not only in Russia factory, but uh, a lot of factory in the world. And uh, now we 
uh, we fight from Italian company to make our system uh, the standard of Philip Morris system of uh, saving uh, equipment in uh, all the factory in the world. That's why we make a uh, function that uh, our system, it's models and uh, the um, instruction that uh, make uh, the process of making this uh, poster mat like in IKEA. So uh, it a, was a big problem to go to another country, making uh, send to another country all um, materials to make these poster mats and uh, make it in then make it in another country and then go back to Russia. Uh, that's why when you make uh, instruction uh, and making the process of uh, uh, making uh, the poster mats uh, too easy. So thank you. Are there any questions from the audience yet? Okay, then I will ask uh, another question. So you mentioned on the, um, six slides that you use uh, this pre-shaped uh, um, cavities for the equipment. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and you mentioned the example of uh, laptop. Uh, but laptops, some laptops are very similar in shape, yeah, right? They are like 13 inch similar laptops. So if a person just uh, switches, uh, so it, it may feed, but it may be a different laptop. So how did you solve this? Um, uh, laptops, of course, is a similar, but um, with a laptops is a bad example because uh, in Philip Morris and uh, I think in uh, some similar in other factory. No one, uh, if you take the laptop from factory, you can uh, go to the customers and uh, put it on. You need to go to the uh, special uh, man that, uh, and uh, he uh, checking, your, checking this laptop for, for uh, different programs that you can make for them dangerous programs for factory that's why uh, no one uh, put down uh, this laptop uh, after using it to customers so uh, when i say about lodgements i mean uh, some uh, equipment like uh, i don't know screw driver or uh, or something another one that uh, have a former uh, very uh, specific forms. So, so uh, in Philip Morris, it was mainly used for something like screwdrivers or uh, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, workspace tools. Uh, uh, they used it for laptop and also for. Uh, Computer mouses, uh, accumulators, uh, web cameras, uh, uh, keyboards, and something like this. Yeah, screwdriver, I think also, yes. Uh, so, uh, as I show, there is a three types uh, you can see in renders. Uh, the first floor is for laptops and the Ending floor uh, is for you can see the lodgements. It's for more smaller equipment like a screw drawer and something like this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, uh, also, uh, yeah. So th th these are very impressive, uh, remarkable results. Uh, uh, can you say a couple of words about you? Uh, are you still a student? Because uh, this is very remarkable. Uh, that you already have commercial success. Uh, so, so can you say a, bit, a, a couple of words on, on uh, how, probably how old are you? Uh, uh, and um, are you still studying as students? Uh, yes, I still studying as students. I started in the second uh, courses of uh, baccalaureate. Uh, so I'm 20 years old. Uh, so, <laughs> okay, uh, okay, so uh, yeah, very impressive. Um, I would like then to uh, thank um, the speaker.
Um, thank you very much. And um, I'm glad to uh, then close this uh, plenary lecture session. It, um, and thank all the participants and the speakers again. Um, and wish you uh, good luck and success and health uh, uh, further. Please take care uh, and um, uh, wish you uh, to enjoy our next sessions. Thank you very much and bye bye.